Well, it's easy to get sucked down a right-wing rabbit hole. There's a lot of fear-mongering going on. There are a lot of conspiracy theories floating around. Some are pretty ridiculous, but there are some that seem quite plausible and, in some cases, even probable. But it also depends on how you break them apart, too. Sometimes there are some things that are true about these conspiracy theories, but a number of the details are wrong. Or sometimes they have the details right, but the notion of the main gist of the conspiracy theory is wrong. So, you, you know, you kind of have to look into all of these things. As far as the election results... Most of these pro-Trump conspiracy theories don't have jack shit to back them up. Lots of talk, but very little to no proof. And the little proof they do have won't stand up in a courtroom. It's not admissible in a courtroom. No matter how many lawsuits get canceled, these pro-Trump people insist that, oh no, everything's about to change. Just you wait. You just wait and see. It's all going to change, everyone. It's going to change. Makes me think of religious fundamentalists. No, no, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. All right, Bertha. Bertha. <laughs> We're supposed to listen to people like Vincent James of Red Elephants. We're supposed to listen to grifters like Mr. Obvious, who says things like this in the middle of his rants. To burn the American flag, in my opinion, is the greatest act of treason you could ever do to America. Yep, burning a piece of cloth is the greatest act of treason you could ever do to a country. I mean, you heard it straight from the grifter's mouth, right? You better agree and chant USA, USA over and over again, or you're not a real patriot, right? After all, freedom of speech is only freedom of speech when it's speech that you agree with. We should treat the desecration of our flag the same way as radical Muslims treat cartoons of Muhammad. Show our real patriotism. Now granted, I don't hear people saying we should behead those that, that desecrate our flag, but you certainly want their rights to be taken away. You think that, they, you know, you agree with Trump's message, of, oh, we should put people who desecrate our flag, let's throw them in prison for 10 years or something on that order. I think it was 10 years, right? And you just applaud that, oh, yes, oh, yes, yes, we, we love freedom of speech. But, you know, we should listen to Rebel News and Mark Dice and Richie from Boston and David Icke and High Impact Flicks and SGT Report and X-22 Report, Millennial Millie, Computing Forever. Oh, wasn't that lovely? You know, went from being a rational atheist or at least somewhat rational atheist to a conspiracy theory peddling Christian. Which is kind of funny because it just seems that most of these conspiracy theory peddling people are religious. You know, you, you believe in a God without evidence, so it's easier for you to believe in other things without evidence. But, you know, listen and believe, right? If the right person says it the right way, you should believe it. Because patriotism, and we should especially listen to Infowars and Alex Jones, right? Because anything else is just the mainstream narrative, and that's wrong by default, right? Now, this is not to say that all these content creators I listed just say false things and only false things. I mean, you can pick apart different things that they say and look them up and, and see, oh yeah, they, what they said here was right and what they said there was right. But all this stuff they said over here and their, their conclusions are wrong. But yeah, I mean, sometimes they're right about things. I'll never deny that at all. Most of them like to deny the severity of the virus. Many of them try to claim that the virus is a plandemic and not just a pandemic. And that the only reason why everything is happening as it is, is because there's an attempt to usher in a communist one-world government. Now, I don't buy into that full theory, but it sure is popular on alternative media. I think the virus is quite serious, and we need to take as many precautions as we can. 
But I do think that there are a number of potentially powerful groups that we could potentially give more power that are trying to take advantage of this situation. Don't let a good crisis go to waste, right? So we have people like Professor Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum declaring that we can't just let things go back to the way they were before the virus. That this is our big chance to make big changes. That we need a great reset. That capitalism needs a great reset. And, and when I hear that, you know, it's kind of worrisome. And much of this is connected to the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Now, on the surface, this agenda sounds really nice. Almost, you know, rainbows and unicorns kind of nice. I mean, why wouldn't we want to do those things? I have highlighted in pink the biggest problem. They have 17 goals that they hope the rest of the world can meet. And of these goals, as you can see, they are integrated and indivisible and balance the three dimensions of sustainable development, the economic, social, and environmental. Now, maybe this still doesn't sound so bad to you. The problem is, these sorts of things would need to be implemented with a pretty heavy hand in order for them to work. And all of them would need to be implemented for any of this to really work either. So let's quickly take a look at these things, shall we? No poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy. Yeah, all those things sound great. I can't find fault with any of those things. Goal number eight. The idea of decent work and economic growth sounds good on the surface. But if you look more into it, it declares... Promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth. Full and productive employment and decent work for all. Now again, that sounds good on the surface, especially the second half. But you can't really plan economic growth that way unless you're promoting a planned economy. And you can't have a planned economy under capitalism. So that puts up a huge red flag for me. Now maybe that flag is unfounded, but it's still a concern to me nevertheless. So let's continue. Industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Sounds good. Goal 10, reduced inequalities. Well, I guess it would depend on how it's done. Sustainable cities and communities. Sounds like quite the undertaking, but quite rewarding in the end. But then we have number 12. Responsible consumption and production. Ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. Well, that's pretty much talking about the regulation of consumption and production. That's a communist idea. That's not even a socialist, you know, a dictionary socialist kind of idea. No, it, it's a step further. That's all the way to communism, you know, where we regulate what people can consume and regulate the production of what people consume so there's little to no waste. If that doesn't concern you in any way, then it doesn't seem you're really looking at what kind of freedoms we would be losing if that sort of thing came to here. Or if that sort of thing, you know, came to any country. What it means for the people living in that country. I mean, maybe you're all right with communism. I don't know. I know I'm not. But let's continue. Climate action. Well, seems like a good goal. Life below water. Yeah, we should try to conserve that. Absolutely. Life on land. Yeah, we should be trying to conserve that as well. You know, those are decent goals. Goal 16. Peace, justice, and strong institutions. Promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development. Provide access to justice for all and build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. Well, I mean, as I said about goal 10, it all depends on how it's done. If it's all about quotas, then no, I, I'm not going to agree with that, as I've said many times. And lastly, goal 17, partnership for the goals. Strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. Well, that's really open-ended. It could be innocent. It could be milk toast. It could be something that we should have slight concern over. 
but it could also mean that we strengthen the stronghold of a global government. Now, as it has been said by those who are in like Flynn when it comes to the 2030 Plan for Sustainable Development, this isn't an unelected group of people swooping in and taking over countries. These are supposed to be guidelines that people agree to. The problem is that even as guidelines, as I said before, in order for any of these goals to be met, we have to meet the rest of the goals as well. So we have to push for all of the goals. These are things that our politicians would have to agree with and try to implement. Are we ready to radically change our lifestyles? Are we ready for that kind of radical change? I certainly don't know if I am. And you can judge me negatively if you want for that. But part of what makes this country what it is, is that people can do things to excess. If someone is rich, they can be as wasteful as they want with how they spend their money. If we take away that ability, or make it harder to do those things, then the end result would be fewer people will try to be rich, because what's the point? What advantage do you have to being rich if you can't live the kind of lifestyle you'd like to live? Now, we can make judgments on those people saying, well, why do you need those things? Oh, why do you need this? But again, that being able to do things in excesses is part of what makes this country what it is. Now, if you're going to make a moral judgment on that and say, well, is it right that people do this? I don't know the answer to that. I just know that this country is the way that it is. I mean, if we push this sort of ideology that's being promoted in the goals to its logical conclusion, probably something that could be reality in maybe even just 40 years, very few people would be granted the privilege to drive their own cars. I'm a real proponent of celebrating the ability to drive our own cars. You know, that's why I bring it up as an example. Someone should be able to be a classic car enthusiast. If they have the money, they should be able to own and drive several cars. Oh, but you don't need that many cars. Do we really want a government that tells people what they can have, what they can drive, how they can live their lives? Under this notion that we can regulate consumption and regulate production and have a planned economy, the notion of someone having and driving several cars would be sort of a relic of history. I could go on, but I've went on about that in other videos, so I don't need to continue on here. But this sort of thing is why I hope that the goals don't gain any sort of significant traction. Because once you're sucked into some of the goals, you'll eventually be pushed into supporting all of the goals. So why are the goals even something I'm considering as any sort of possibility? Well, the phrase, build back better, comes to mind. I'm sure you've heard people say this before. It's come from a number of politicians, including Joe Biden, Boris Johnson, Justin Trudeau, oh, especially Justin Trudeau. And build back better is all about promoting the goals. When I first heard the phrase, I thought it was just another one of these catchphrases that some people on the left were saying. Some useless slogan again. But no, it has a much larger meaning. Now, I don't think that this means that the United States is suddenly going to surrender to the United Nations. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. But it does raise some red flags. I don't fully know what it means. But either way, I mean... We're going to experience whatever it is we experience after December 14th, but especially after January 20th. Whether that means that all the Vincent Jameses out there were right, and we somehow have Trump in a second term, or if Biden really does take the reins. We certainly live in interesting times. Thanks for watching.